of blonde or female. What this says is that we're going to have, by the addition rule, the probability of being blonde, that's our first event, plus the probability of being female, that's our second event thing we're looking for, minus the probability that they could occur together. So this would equal the probability of blonde minus the probability of being female, sorry, plus the probability of being female, minus the probability of being female. Blonde and female. So our first event was blonde. What's the probability that you're going to find someone who's blonde in this room? Sure. So 0.18. Somebody else, what's the probability you're going to select someone who's female from this room? So 0.6. Basically, they just get them right from here. Right here. Minus the probability that they can occur. To, can they occur together in this classroom? Yeah. Sure. We actually have several girls who are both blonde and female. What's the probability you're going to pick out a blonde female? Oh. Now, why are we subtracting it again? Why are we subtracting that? Yeah. yeah, because when you look at this, you've automatically counted that 12% in the females. You've also automatically counted that in the blondes, right? And so we need to subtract it one time to eliminate one of those counts because we've just double counted it. So we add the 0.18 to the 0 0.60, we subtract the 0.12, and we get how much? Uh, that's it. 0.66. What's that mean? 66% chance that you're going to randomly select what again? Is it a blonde female? No. No, it's a blonde or a female. So get this, if I came in the room and picked a name out of a hat, there's a 66% chance that I'm going to pick any one of the women or anyone who's blonde. So that would be a 66% chance I'm going to pick you or 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 you. Even though you have dark hair, right? You're still still female, so that doesn't, I mean, that you don't have to be blonde female here. Or Thomas. He's not female, <laughs> but he's blonde. So he would fit in this category. Are you with me on this? So either a female or a blonde would satisfy this, this condition. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? I would feel pretty good about that. Good for you. Good for you. Let's try one more, then we'll do our complimentary stuff. We're going to go back to a deck of cards, this is kind of a good one for us. Let's find the probability of uh, randomly selecting out of a deck of cards a diamond or king. A diamond or a king. Okay. There's kings. Let's talk about your diamond. What's better than a diamond? It's more like a parallelogram with a funny side. Whatever. It's okay. Anyway, probability of selecting a diamond or a king. So, well, by the addition rule, what this says is we're going to find the probability of selecting a diamond all by itself. Then we're going to add to it the probability of selecting a king all by itself. And then if they could occur together, we're going to subtract the probability of selecting a diamond, and they're getting worse also, aren't they? And a king at the same time. So remember, this and, this and right here means during the same trial. One draw of the cards. Okie dokie. Alright? Alright. What's the probability of selecting a diamond? What's the probability that this is going to happen? Say that louder. 13. That's right. I think so, gotcha. 13 over 52. Um, see, I got, got, got distracted by your ducking. 13 over 52. Yeah, there's 13 diamonds out of 52 total cards. True. Okay, let's look at the kings. How many kings are there in a deck of cards? Four. So the probability of selecting a king is four out of what? 
Yeah. yeah, please don't make the mistake of putting something like 13. There's still 52 cards, right? So 52 goes here as well. Should have a common denominator already. So 13 over 52, because we have 13 diamonds out of 52 cards. 4 out of 52, because we have 4 kings out of 52. We look at these independently. Just the probability of selecting a diamond. Just the probability of selecting a king. And then we think of, can these things happen at the same time? So we need to find the probability of selecting a diamond and a king at the same time. That can happen, because you're pulling out one card. How many choices do you have for that to happen? One. There's one king of diamonds. Right? There's only one of them. Out of how many cards? Yeah, it's not out of 13. We're not talking about just the diamonds. We're talking about all the cards here. There's only one diamond, which is also a king, out of the 52 cards. How much is that going to be? Okay. We have a common denominator. That's great. You do 13 plus 4 minus 1. That's going to give you 16. So 16 out of 52. Or if you want to approximate that, you got what is a decimal? 0.31. 0.31? Yeah, it. 31 what? Zero? It's 3 point, or it's 0.30. Put 3.310 then. So about a 31% chance that you're going to select either a diamond or a king, right? You don't have to pick just a diamond or just a king. So let's think about the, the things that would accomplish this for us. You can pick out the uh, two of diamonds. That would work, right? You pick out the king of diamonds, or you can pick out the king of spades or hearts or, or anything else. So any king or any diamond would work here. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is complementary events. I'll just take a moment to go through this. This is event A, this is the complement of event A. That bar on top meant the complement in this instance. What's the probability of this? What do you think? One. Why one? Because it has everything. It does, right? The event plus its complement has to be everything. And in fact, if you did the addition rule, probability of A Great. Plus the probability of the complement of A minus the probability they can occur together at the same time. What is this probability, by the way? No, this probability. of What's the probability of A and the complement of A happening at the same time? In other words, what's the probability you can roll a 1 and a 5? Yeah. 1 and a two, three, four, five, or six. That's not going to happen. These things, by definition, are mutually exclusive. They do not happen at the same time. That's how complements were even discussed. This probability is equal to one. This one, in fact, equals zero. They can't happen at the same time. So really what it comes down to, I gave this already, which is why I can go kind of quickly through it. If you look at this half of our equation, we have the probability of A plus the probability of the complement of A equals how much? This is all of some event, and this is everything else could, that could happen, right? What's the probability that this or anything else is going to happen, basically? One. Yeah, this is one. From that, this implies a couple things. It implies that if you have one of these events, you can, you can find, oh, sorry, that, that just distracted me. Um, he looks so confused as, as to why this is not his classroom. He's like, what? I swear I've been here before. Okay. Anyway, um, it implies that if you know the problem, is it the 13th or something? Like, what? If you know one of these probabilities, you automatically know the other one. Do you see that? If you know the probability of an event, you automatically know it's complement. Why? Treat it like an equation. Subtract this from both sides or subtract this from both sides, you're going to get two corollaries here. The probability of event A 
is 1 minus the probability of its complement occurring. The probability of a complemented event is 1 minus the probability of the event itself. Just subtract that from both sides. One of those things has to happen, so our probabilities must be this way. If you want to find the probability of an event, sometimes it's easier to look at the probability of a complement and subtract it. If you want the probability of the complement, a lot of times it's easy to look at the probability of an event and subtract it. We're going to do this a lot when we get into um, chapter 5. Chapter 5 does this a lot. Let me give you one example and we'll call it good for today. Just a basic example for now. I'm going to build on this as we go through our course. So the probability of having a baby girl is actually not 50-50. I'm going to make it up. I don't know exactly what it is, but I know it's a little bit greater. 0.512. Let's say it's 0 0.512. Now, this would be actually an observed probability because someone went out and found out how many girls there were out of the whole population and determined that, well, of course, how many baby girls are being born out of the whole population and determined that somehow it's 51.2% that you have a girl. Does that make sense to you? So this would be considered an observed prob prob probability because it came from somewhere. What I want to figure out is what's the probability of a boy? Well, without actually going out there and doing all the work, we should be able to figure this out, right? If the probability of having a girl is 51.2%, how do we figure out the probability of having a boy? Now, mathematically, we know that having a boy is the same thing as the complement of having a girl, isn't it? You can't have the same thing twice. Um, usually. <laughs> usually, that's what happens. So, the probability of having a boy is the probability of having the complement of a girl, which is 1 minus the probability of actually having the girl, because these things are complementary events. And we found out right here, the probability of the complement, same thing as 1 minus the probability of that event. So over here we go, oh yeah, it's 1 minus the probability of actually having a girl. Now I know I'm making this a lot of steps to do something that you could probably just look at and go, oh yeah, it's 0.488, whatever. Uh, but this is how you do this in general later on, which is not going to be so so easy, okay? So this is this is the idea. Probability of the boy, that's the same thing as the probability of the complement of the girl. That's the same thing as one minus the probability of the girl. That's something that we actually know. And that's how you can get the point. It is 0 0.488, right? Yeah. yeah. Or 48.8 percent chance you're gonna have a boy. How people feel good about the complement idea. How about everything we talked about? Does this make sense to you? Do you guys have any questions on it so before we continue? All right.